Today, uh, I'm on the theme on the anointing, and I'll go a bit of a series there. And of course, in this week, prayer and fasting, we'll touch also a little bit more about the anointing. And today, I want to talk about the car. Say the car. Uh, my wife was seeing me doing this, uh, doing this uh, presentation. I said, what are you talking about? You're going to preach about the car. I said, yeah, I'm going to talk about the car. Okay, now, let's go <laughs> at Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27 first. Okay, Isaiah 10, verse 27. Uh, and shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the last statement, basically, uh, a lot of people use that statement, that the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. The anointing will break the bondage. The anointing oil will break the yoke that is upon your life and our, our life as well. And even in our church, we pray that the anointing oil will break and give us further freedom and cause further growth to our church. Now, I want to talk to you about our car and liken our church to that of the car. All right? Now, this is the first week. And the first week, usually, we want to cast the vision a little bit to help us understand uh, the first week of the new year. We have a new team believing God for a new direction, to trust God, to lead us on uh, to a new direction. And I believe before we move in this new direction, before we see a fresh anointing of God, we need to make changes. Say changes. All right, we want to make changes to our church. Okay, what changes are we going to make? Well, well, well um, uh, I wish, of course, uh, Right now, we have a fresh new building waiting for us to move in. Of course, then we can make, wow, what a drastic change we're going to have. But uh, it doesn't always work like that, all right? So, uh, so we want a fresh anointing. We want to make changes right here in, our, in this place that God has given us. With changes, we have greater expectation, all right? I shared with you on our watch night and that this year must be a year of expectation, great expectation, believing God for greater things, uh, not only just spiritually, but uh, also physically, financially, your family as well, believing God for greater expectation, believing that God will take us to a greater height and greater growth. And so, uh, even in our church life, we have seen a certain time where there is a spur of growth. But then we plateau, we are comfortable, we are kind of uh, happy. And I, I also must say that uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you take energy, you know, take energy. We require energy to, uh, to uh, continue to spur uh, the church. So I'm praying God for fresh energy. Amen. When you're young, you've got a lot of energy. And then... Uh, of course, let me just say that uh, there are different phases in our life, all right? And uh, I have been through a lot of phases in our life. Uh, the phase where uh, when, you, when you are single when you are, uh, or when you are married but no children, there are a lot of things you can do, all right? You can do a lot of things. But when you start having children, it's another phase in, in your life. But sometimes some of these phases that comes in, drastically change our, our, our commitment to God, which is dangerous and which is sad. All right? You find that some of them start having children, they drifted out, they, they no longer want to be active and to serve God because they have time, they, they need time for the children and, uh, and maybe some of them cannot handle their kids. All right? Whether can or cannot. The cannot is even worse. Some of them cannot handle their kids, cannot discipline their children, and so on and so they are lost. There is a generation of parents, actually, when, when the wife gave birth to a child, the parents actually do not know what to do. They are lost about how to train, how to teach, you know, and they get panic. They, they become paranoid when a child starts crying. All right? They think that when a child cries, there is a problem. There is a problem. Actually, when a child cries, it doesn't mean always there is a problem. It simply means the child have not learned to talk, that's it. So he cried, 
Huh? So, uh, so parents start to panic. So that phase, and there's the phase when the children start going to school, which is then we worry about education, we worry about the kids' education, and now, now in our Malaysia, in Malaysia is even more uh, serious and critical because uh, people are asking what school to go to. Huh? We have lost trust in our public school. Should we go to a private school? And private school costs a big bomb. All right? It burns such a big hole in you and then quarrels start happening in the family again because a lot of money is being used. So uh, really, sometimes we advise, now we are not in this family thing, not that, but just some short notes here and there that if money is really, really an issue, uh, it will cost you a big bomb. If you have one kid, it's all right. If you have three kids, Costing you a thousand dollar each to go to school. That's a lot of money. That's a lot for monthly. It's a lot. So if you cannot afford it, then you need to really seriously think about sending to private school, uh, uh, public school. Public school is, well, it's not the best that we want, all right? But it is not very, very bad. It's, don't exaggerate too much. Lah, huh? It's bad, but not so bad. Lah. Right. I came from public school. My children came. Oh, pastor, different. Now the time changed already. Oh, these are those days. You all never mind. I tell you, during our time also, we had terrible teachers. Okay? We have teachers who don't turn up. We have teachers who talk nonsense. We have teachers who ask us to read the textbook only. During my time, all right? During my son's time, it's also the same. All right? During my son's time, we have an English teacher who cannot speak English. All right, uh, and has got all her spelling and grammar wrong. All right, English teacher and my son got to teach them. All right, teach them never mind she get angry some more. All right, so we have maths teacher halfway do maths cannot find the answer. Oh, tomorrow only I tell you answer. During my son's time, my son, okay, I'm not talking about your your son now, your school now. During my children's time, all right, and I know, I know there are a lot of English teacher that try to teach English using Bahasa Malaysia, right? You've heard before, right? So I won't say it again. So, uh, and, <laughs> and uh, during my time, uh, we do have such struggle, okay? Uh, so if finances is really a struggle, I, I think, I think if you have three or four kids, you cannot afford it, but because education becomes such a big thing to you, and sometimes I think parents have gone really on the extreme, worshipping education, thinking that Kiasu, the Kiasu syndrome, you know. Because I've met one lady many, many years ago, you know, she said she already sent her two year old, three year old to tuition, you no. Know? Oh my goodness, she's three years old. Why send to tuition? Let her enjoy her childhood. Let her play masa masa, play Lego and all that, no? Oh, tuition. Three years old. No la. Okay, anyway. If you have been doing that, I'm not pinpointing at you. I don't know your situation. Alright? So anyway, let me just say this. That if you really cannot afford it, and if you're sending all your three or four school, your kids to private school, and you and your Wife have to uh, pull your hair, quarrel every night, worry about finances, worry about how you're going to pay your fees for next month or for this month. I think it's not worth it. I think it's not worth it. Your children may have a little better education, but your family life, your emotion, your relationship is being strained. You understand what I mean? Huh? And then you grow up, your children grow up being dysfunctional. Dysfunctional family. They, they have, oh, they come out from this school, from that school, from this uni. But the father, mother, dysfunctional. Fighting, quarreling all the time. Uh, working three jobs, you know, and non at home all the time because he has to work extra just to get the money. I think it's not worth it, right? It's not worth it. Uh, let me just say this. So, uh, just to encourage you that uh, uh, if you have no choice, go to 
public school, okay, guide them. You already have advantage. You speak to them in English, they already have advantage. They know English already have advantage. Already. Guide them, speak to them, and uh, and uh, so my my three kids are public school. Okay, what? Not very stupid. <laughs> very well, doing very well right now. So you may say, ah, yeah, your time different. Okay, I know, maybe, maybe. But I'm telling you, the problem you talk about now, my children actually face it. They face very weird teachers, very weird. During my time, got weird one, but not so weird. Now, during their time, but pastor now more weird. Ah, yeah, I don't know lah, you know. But okay, what well, you see, public school teacher, see, Li Chan, uh, very good, what she, very normal, what, uh, normal one, normal. <laughs> So, what I'm saying is don't demonize it too much that, uh, you know, some really cannot afford it but still send. I'm not saying it's wrong to send to private school. You can do it. If you can afford it, you can live peacefully and still be happy, the whole family happy, then by all means do it. All right? So, no, really no issue. But to me, I think the most important period is when they go to tertiary education. Uh, uni. You know, some uh, go through this private school until uh, cannot find the children. I must go overseas. You know. Wow, lagi you know. They take all those costs. They take the private school. Uh. Then when they go uni, the local uni cannot. Some other uni cannot, must go overseas. Lagi tialat. Oh. Where to get all the money to pay? You know? huh? Must think of the airfare. Lah. Wow. Sell house, uh, if you got a house to sell, praise God. Uh, some got no house to sell, you know. And then one one uh, cost in UK cost five, six hundred thousand. If my son like that, I will die already. I die already. All the faith in the world cannot help, right? Now. Get me now. Don't don't get into that super spiritual thing. Uh. God will provide. Uh, huh? oh, oh, God will provide. Uh. Send him to England, uh, 500,000. Then the second one want to go to England some more, another 500,000. Third one will go to Australia. Die, uh, die, die. die. <laughs> sure die one. Right now. Hmm? <clears throat> so, of course, uh, and uh, I don't know how come I went there, you know. I didn't want to talk about it. I'm talking about church. Yeah? Uh, so, uh, changes. Uh, very uh, concerned for changes. All right? And uh, of course, today over lunch or so, uh, this person is asking us. Uh, he got a granddaughter now, uh, standard five, this year standard six, and asking should, should, should we, uh, they send her to, to a private school. Now they're in public school. And question like that. These are all different, different phases, right? Phases in our life when our children start going to school, right? Then another phase is when your parents start getting old and you have to take care of our parents. And that's a very critical phase uh, where I had uh, my mother, my own mother and my mother-in-law both passed away in my house at different times, of course. They didn't die together, but they... <laughs> At different time, all right. First, it was my mother-in-law. Huh? She was dementia already, and uh, we took care of her. My wife, basically, la, praise God for her, huh? took care of her, and uh, I saw her breathe her last breath, right, in my house. Then my mother fell sick, had tumor, had an operation, was invalid as a result. That also was in the house for about nine months. And uh, these are different phases that really drew, draw energy from us, draw and take away our time. And, uh, and so we need to juggle between God, serving God, our own spiritual life, family life, and this phase where the old people come in, you know. And sometimes when old people come in and stay with you, uh, and uh, if they are invalid, never mind, but if they are valid and... Uh, and they give you a lot of problem, all right? Okay, no, that's a joke, lah, all right? So they come and live with you, give you a lot of problem, throw your pots and pans, uh, burn your pen, uh, not pens, a uh, pen, uh, burn your pen and uh, misplace your stuff, your kitchen. You know, they say you cannot have two queens in the kitchen, only one, all right? 
And uh, I know some of you ladies, you don't want people to misplace. When you want to find it, you want to find it there, right? Your walk, la, your ladder, whatever it is. So, so this is another, another phase. And uh, I know it is tough family time, but you have to learn to juggle. And then we need a, a lot of the grace of God to keep us serving, all right? And then, of course, our phase now at this time, of course, there's another phase where they are in tertiary education and cost a lot of money and uh, we are concerned for, you know, and then, of course, now that my kids are all graduated and now another phase is talking about their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their marriage, their arrangement. Oh, many many problem, huh? You know, what they like, la, what we like, la, this and that. So, wow, so many things, you know. And that's another phase. All right. Don't think you have been delivered. Because once they're all married, then you'll be, get your datuk ship at time. That's another phase. You understand? Or? Grandchildren come in, another phase. So, the real issue is how do I evolve into this different phase in my life and yet, I can serve God. I can put God first in my life. That's very, 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 very important. All right. And of course, as you grow older, things also change. All right. Health issues, uh, they are concerned about health issues. And then I also understand that as you grow older, you suddenly get allergic to certain things. All right. And so on and so forth. And today I had a terrible, terrible lunch. Terrible lunch today, you know. It was not the food. It was the first bite I had on the fish. And half my teeth came off. And so, half my teeth came off. Very painful, no. And I did not touch it now. I got very weak teeth, as I told you. And a very weak teeth. Uh, here now, now is this side. And uh, I don't know. Lah. I, uh, maybe I should take it all out and wear denture, right? Frighten my wife in the middle of the night without teeth, okay? So, but uh, these are all different phrases. But you know, if you cannot cope with these changes, there is a tendency for us to withdraw uh, from serving the Lord. You understand now? So when the, all these changes come, we need to move on. We need to press on. We need to keep growing. We need to keep believing. All right, that God is on our side. Amen. Amen. There is a miracle. God can do miracle. God can do great things. God is on our side. All right. And so even our church go through different phases. Right. You know, we were, we were, uh, we there was a setback when Pastor Tio had uh, had his uh, health problem. So def definitely there was a setback. We were all good. We were all very blessed by him, and uh, I was very excited with him. And uh, you know, uh, and that is. Uh, Another phase when he had to go through that situation. And of course, last year we know with Pastor Elijah and Angela leaving us. So that's another phase now. All right. And uh, so we need to think about how we can continue to press on and to move on. And uh, the most important thing is don't sit down and suck and suck your thumb. All right. And say, my grandchildren like that, my father like that, my mother like that, give me problem. Don't sit down and South, press on, rise up, and be strong. Amen. And, and grow and accommodate these changes. These changes in our life is, is natural. You cannot avoid one. How can you avoid your mother getting old and getting sick one day pass away? Cannot avoid one. Right. It will happen. Right. It will happen. So you cannot avoid. So these are changes. Uh, that happened, and, uh, but I believe it should not stop us from being committed. It should not stop us from serving. It should not stop us from drawing closer to God and continue to serve Him even more. Amen. Serve Him even more. So it should not stop us. All right? So, uh, Let's talk about uh, uh, a few other things. Let's continue what I'm going to say. And, um, so I liken the church to a car. All right. The car has a body. And, uh, and also it has an engine. 
And also, one very important thing, it has fuel in order for it to move. Therefore, we need to make changes to this car and how to relate it to the church for the year 2020. And it became a joke, you know, in our country. Uh, the person who gave us the idea of Vision 2020 is still the Prime Minister again this time. And I don't know whether he is giving us 2030 or not. Of course, I don't think he will live that long. Huh? And uh, so 2020 for a country, I don't think we achieve development status. All right. Like I told you, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. What's the same thing? Malaysia, no change. Same thing, same thing. Race, religion, corruption, over and over again. Over, and over. They train new people, race, religion, corruption. Younger one come up, race, religion, corruption. No change. No change, no growth. So we learn from this and let us say, God, I want to make changes. If you have been reading a little bit of the Bible, read more. If you have been praying a little bit, pray more. If you have not been fasting, start on Monday, okay? So if you have not <coughs> done something <coughs> different, change. But pastor, I don't know what else to change. If there is nothing else you know what to change, change your hairstyle. <laughs> Do something different. I've known some people, same hairstyle for the last 30, 40 years. I met some pastor, every year, same hairstyle. Every year. You see the hair, you know him already, you see him. Right? You can even know him from behind. Of course, I'm not talking about those without hair. I'm, <laughs> without hair, no hairstyle. Lah. No hair, how to have style. Okay? So, I'm talking about some of my pastor friends. Ah. Every year, I say, hey, change your hairstyle. Lah. Huh? Change. Lah. Okay? All the same thing all the time. Now, that's just a... Uh, just a light one for you, okay? So, now, let's look about the car, okay? Now, let's look at the body. Now, the body, the car has a body, and it is the first impression whenever you want to buy one, isn't it? Now, when you first want to buy a car, what do you look for? The body, ma. You look at the car, correct or not? And most importantly, if you're buying a second car, if the second car is dented, rusty, you don't care what car is here, you wouldn't want to buy it. You see, because the car is that dented, it's rusty, it got a hole in it, you know, and it's not, it doesn't look good, it doesn't look good. So, when you want to buy a car, you want to see the body looks good, okay? Now, before you look at the engine, how many of you will want to look at the engine, at the car that's really old, la, rusty, la, not painted? Yeah, yeah, no need. I see the body also, I don't want anything. Isn't it? So the body is important. So I see the car body is equating with the building or the facilities of the church. Our building, our facilities. So we really, this year, maybe, uh, if we can, we want to change a little bit about the church, the the atmosphere, the the uh, of the building, I make it look more contemporary, welcoming. You know, some pastors came to uh, our church. I think it was two years ago, and told me, "Wow, your church is very old already, huh?" Eh? Hmm. He's talking about the building now. I don't think he's talking about us lah, old. You know? Your church is very old. Hmm. Maybe, yeah, maybe we should make some changes lah. Uh, I don't know. I'm not an interior designer. Then, so maybe we should make some uh, some changes to make it more modern, more contemporary, more modern. Uh, put in some nice lighting. Uh, make it a little bit more uh, ro uh, romantic. No romantic. Make it a bit more uh, soothing, you know. Uh, um, so, so our worship team say we must dim the light a little bit, you know. You know, there was one church, i tell you something. You know why I want to talk about this? There was one church. Uh, I was instrument in, uh, instrumental in advising the church. 
uh, and uh, the church had a lady pastor, and uh, when she reached about, I think, 50 or 50 some, she handed the church to a young man. All right, and then of course she stayed on the church as a advisor and so on. But this young man is in his early 30s. Wow, this young man make a lot of drastic change right, in the hall. Man, he, he, I, I don't know what he did. He, he, dim, he changed the light. Worship time, he dimmed the light. Wow, a lot of old people left the church. Oh. They don't like him. Oh. They're angry. Oh. They wrote letter to me and complained. Oh. And say, oh, now all your old people walk into the church, cannot see. Oh. We can sleep and fall. Oh. How can we worship God in darkness? Oh. Worship God in darkness. We must worship in the light. Not in darkness. Wow, they get all spiritual, no? Uh, about uh, things like that, you know, it's like walking to a disco, la, got light shining here, turning here, turning there, glaring like from the platform, and then, you know, so distracting, I cannot concentrate worshipping God, and then some say the song is so fast, went to second stanza, I'm still trying to sing the first stanza, wow, and then it's all so rocky, and some of the old people start complaining. Some of them write letters to us, you know, and say, complain about this church, want us to look into the church, you know. So I met up the pastor and talked to him. He is he's a visionary. He just believed that uh, he, he wants to move on. And that church has been a very old church for a long, long time, you know. And uh, plays the palm organ. Na 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 But this young guy make, you know, come and bring in music and bring in, you know, wow, worship in darkness. Can I worship in darkness? Huh? Darkness means light, la. We are not saying darkness as in sin. Worship in darkness cannot. Not totally dark, la. Still can see, la. <laughs> I see. can still see la. <laughs> not totally done. So I had a lot of complaints. Some actually left the church, you know. Some of the older ones, some of them have been in the church for so many years. They have been in the year. One of them told me, you know, Pastor, you know how I've been in this church you know, how many years? I'm still talking about this church, huh? This young pastor told me, you know how many years I've been? Thirty old years I've been in this church, you know. Now suddenly, uh, this kind of thing, uh, where we can accept change. We must be ready for some change. Amen. Right now, time has changed. Right? Correct now. Huh? How many of you sleep in non-aircon room? Still got like, no, one, two, three. This is how you cannot stand aircon, I know. Most of you aircon already. No aircon, be cool. Sibo. Huh? Bo aircon be cool, huh? Because time has changed. How many of your car no aircon? <laughs> you know the first car I sat in, my father bought the car. Got a fan on, you know. At the dashboard. The fan is this size and blue color on the fin. It will turn. <laughs> Got fan in the car. Have you seen it or not? How many of you see a fan in the car? Good ah! Wow, I can see how old you are. <laughs> and the fan turn on the on <laughs> dashboard. On. That is about the coolest thing you can get those days. Nowadays, will you buy a car without aircon? You won't ah. You will not. There isn't an, a car without aircon anyway. So the body is very important. All right. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, so also we want to go into multimedia. In fact, some people tell me, you know, Pastor, multimedia is the forefront of the church. Nowadays, when 
people want to find out about the church, they go Google. They Google, right? Now, we, I know there's a little board outside. I don't know whether you noticed or not. I think we should take it down. The board tells you all the service time, all right? Now, I have, frankly speaking, I've not noticed the board for a long time. Maybe I drive in most of the time. I've not noticed the board, but the board already wrong information, all right? Still on Sunday service, no Saturday service, youth service, all that, a bit wrong. So, some people tell me, should we change the board? I think nobody come to the church and look at the board anymore. Find out what. Those days when we want to go to a church, when we want, let's say I'm in town, in KL or in Penang or somewhere else, and I want to attend church service, I will drive to the church, look at the board, and find out what time is their services. Nowadays, nobody do that. Most people will Google. Correct or not? Huh? I don't know how Google works uh, in the sense that, you know, when you go to, when you Google uh, a shop, a coffee shop, it will tell you what time it open, what time it close, right now. Huh? And then what day are holiday. I don't know whether church can or not. No. We have to do such a thing where they Google our church or praise or all their service, my service time come out one from Google. Can or not? Can or? So you who can do it, please help us do it. Uh. Can I? Uh? Wow, expert ah. Where is Wing Yin? We found one multimedia guy already. Can do ah. Eh? Just behind you only, James. See, you got multimedia guy. You know, I was in a church. I preached in some small churches. They are multimedia better than us. Wow, they are. Wow, church. Wah. So I preached in this church uh, just about... Uh, in November, in November, I preached in the church. Uh, Peter was with me. Uh, we preached in some major church, very small church, isn't it? So after the service, one of the guy, you know, he's a he's a foreigner, I think he from Pakistan or something like that. He's uh, like a refugee here. He said, Pastor, by next week your sermon will go worldwide. Wow, worldwide oh, very famous oh. I tell you, there are many good preachers in the world today, but you know some of them because of multimedia. But there are many, many better ones you don't know because they are not on multimedia. There are many good churches. Uh, it's the multimedia that... Uh, actually, multimedia... Something about multimedia la, makes the church look better than they, they actually are. La. <laughs> but still, who cares, right? Not? Multimedia is like that. So I think we want to go uh, right into that. People can just Google, there's a church of praise in Ipoh. These are all their church services, their office, all right? And then if they are Googling on Monday night at 9 o'clock p.m., it will say close, all right? All right? Office is closed. The office open what time and so on and so forth. It will be interesting in sub if somebody can help us, all right? And of course now our sermon can be downloaded and uh, we would like to have something ongoing every every other day. You know, something new, something fresh. When something uh, somebody opened our site, uh, there's a little widow clip, there's a little this and that. And uh, people know about our children church, people know about our, our youth and uh, our cell group, our missions, uh, where we are going. We are going to Flores in... in uh, February, and so on and so forth. It will be nice if we are full on uh, in multimedia. But we will try to do it one thing at a time. Basically, basically we are looking for people to help us. That's what we, we want. We are looking for people who can get it done for us. Please, I cannot do it because I, I don't know how to do it. I can learn, but it'll take me like a few years, you know? You get what I mean? No? I, this, this, this thing also I'm learning, you know? This thing I do one. That also, not bad lah. <laughs> huh? Boleh pakai lah. Huh? Eh, cia lah. Eh, sa bo. Okay. Uh, so, and therefore we do need volunteers to help us. We also want to make some changes to our services, okay? Not the service time, but the way uh, we do our service, the way we, uh, okay, and I've always t- 
tell the, the worship team, hey, do a bit of dancing. Lah. Do you know one time we did one? Once, there was some years ago, was it an anniversary or, you know, and uh, the two song leader will be coming down, uh, do some, a few steps, and then sing, and then I don't know lah, what they do, you know, a bit more. Well, I must say this, I must say this. Uh, there is a fine line between entertainment and worship. All right? Some people make it all entirely an entertainment, which I, I, I don't fully subscribe to that, but there needs to be a certain amount of little bit of entertainment because that's what people, you know, especially to attract the non-believers, attract the new people, they want a little bit, you know, uh, uh, a bit of engagement, correct? So, like my preaching, it, I, my, when I preach, I engage. I engage people, I talk to people, I, right? I, I put my hand on people's shoulder. Actually, I'm engaging, you don't know. You don't see, but this is uh, my style. Huh? I'm engaging, okay? So when you, when I do this, you're all looking, right? You're looking, or not? You're wondering what I'm doing. I'm resting myself. <laughs> but it's, it's engagement, all right? So it's a way of communication, you know, communication and so on. Uh, so this, this uh, really helps if we can make some changes. We are looking into it, how we can make it more, uh, more lively, all right. Uh, I know we have got a lot of old people in our church now, but uh, we used to make everybody dance in church last time when I was younger. When I was a song leader, do you know I used to be a song leader? Don't play, play, ah. Huh? I sing, then musicians follow me. They follow my key, ah. Huh? No, I follow their key, ah. Huh? And I used to make people dance, huh? The whole church dance, all right. So uh, those days, huh? <laughs> Now, I myself also cannot dance long. Can lah, five minutes, five minutes, three minutes lah, can. You get what I mean? So, uh, to make it a bit more uh, lively and um, maybe to include lightings. Yeah. Uh, we're going to spend some money on lightings and uh, there will be some, I don't know what lighting we're going to put, but uh, let the expert do it and uh, so that uh, uh, lighting, we may want to paint, paint up this place and... Uh, do a bit of changes and make it more cozy, more modern, and so on. So the body of a car is important. That's what we call the first impression. All right. And I heard some people like our church. Uh, some people keep coming to our church, and the first time they came was our youth Sunday. So there were some young people or uh, young adult who came in and were impressed with our Youth Sunday, and then they kept coming to our church because Youth Sunday uh, is a little bit uh, more uh, funky, more, not funky, I don't know what's the word for it, more lively, more exciting, and uh, they like the style, they like the way it's done, okay? So then they, they keep coming, but they got a shock the following Sunday, eh? turn back to old people. <laughs> but, uh, never mind, we catch the fish already, okay? So, um, we don't know. Now, I'm not a master in it, all right? I, I only read the Bible and preach and uh, give you an exciting sermon if I want to. But uh, the, all the, the body itself of the car, we need to do a little bit of changes so that it becomes attractive, all right? So the next thing uh, we need to change is uh, the engine. The engine of the car is very important. The car without the engine is useless. It looks very nice with a great body. May look a, <coughs> may a Ferrari, <coughs> but no engine. Huh? What for? Useless, right? Uh, but it hates nowhere. A body without engine hates nowhere. What is the engine? The engine is the people. You and I. If you have a Ferrari and put a Proton Saga engine inside, Boliga. Huh? Useless, right? You must have a good engine. So the engine, I say, God, the engine of a car is like you and I. So we need to be excited people. And then we need to have people who love people. Now let's go to the next slide. 
our people, our church, beginning with the pastors, the staff, the leaders, the rest of us must rise to the occasion. The most important thing as a people is that we need to love people and beginning with one another, let's love one another. Amen? Three uni. Let's love one another. Amen. Yeah, amen. Let's love one another. And those who have been ignored in church. Now, let me just say this. I've said this to the cell leaders. I've said this to the church many times. You know, uh, last week also on Sunday, we had many newcomers. And uh, we had many newcomers. And <coughs> we had some newcomers, so to speak newcomers, whom I know they have been in church for two, three months. Because when I preach, I know where they are. I see their face, okay? It's just that I cannot catch hold of them on Sunday, maybe because of the altar call, and they want to they go, they go away quick, huh? the altar call, and then some people see me before, uh, after the service, or they run very, they are like sleepy fish, right? Whew, they run away. And so, I actually talked to some leaders last week. I said, do you know this couple? Pastor, they are new. No, they have been in our church for two, three months already. They say they don't notice. Then I asked another one, do you know this person? Do you know this young person? Uh, don't know. I said, they, they are new. Can you catch hold of them? After, you know, I, I always say this, if they are non-believer. Now, to go out to somebody's platform and preach to a non-believer can be tough. But they are already in our platform. They are already in church. If they are new believer, they are non-believer. If they are here, we should preach Christ to them. After service, sit down with them and say, "Do you? You need to know Jesus. Uh, uh, catch hold of them and talk to them about Christ." But this has to be a church effort. You, we cannot just confine it. Oh, let the cell leaders do it. Let the staff do it. Let the pastors do it. But all of us play a role in reaching out. Sometimes in service, after service, I see some people just staying alone, outside, waiting alone. They are new. Nobody talks to them. Uh, in some sense, we become very cliquish. We go by the cell, cliquish already. We like to mix with the cell and so on. The young adult will kumpo together, kumpul, you know, and then they'll chat and then the cell adult will chat somewhere in a group. They go for breakfast. I told you already, one time me, you forgot now. Ah. Don't just go alone. Carry, bring somebody you don't know. But pastor, he only coming, he's, he's coming to visit. Visit also can be friend, ma. Correct or not? But he won't come again next week. Okay, what? What do you think? You want to catch somebody who stay in Ipoh, but he, they stay in care, also catch them. You know, we have cases. We have somebody got saved from Singapore. I know him in Singapore. I preached at the camp before. He knows me. And he came here purposely to bring one of his relatives here. Uh, was it on Christmas or one of the Sunday? I forgot. We brought him here and the guy got saved. The guy got saved and now he's in church. Every Sunday he comes. He's in Clarence cell. His name is Yap. You understand or not? So there are connections. So I just want to encourage you, please reach out to new ones even if it's not new, he's new to you, it's okay. Talk to them. Make friends. What's wrong? As a church, they're all my brothers and sisters, right? Hey, please, you got to live with it. We are going to live with him for all eternity in heaven. So better get to know all of them. Huh? Chat, talk with them. And especially on Sunday or Saturday after service, you see, I see sometimes people waiting for grab, you know, and uh, the occasion I ask them, where you live, where you stay, hey, why don't I send you? Oh, but pastor, I already called Greg on the way already. But it'd be nice lah, if we can help in one way or other and, and show the engine is important. No point having a nice building, nice atmosphere, but the people are cold. You know, I, uh, somebody just told me, somebody told me that... Uh, uh, it's a pastor. He said, you know, uh, I went to this particular church. Uh, he had a friend who went to this particular church in Ipoh. He, praise God, it's not church of praise. Lah, huh? I won't tell you what church is it. Went to this particular church. The couple sat there at the back. Uh, it wasn't a very big church. 
But he said it's a very cold church. Uh, they sat there, the service went, and after the service, nobody talked to them. I don't think you like to go to a church where nobody talked to you, nobody reach out to you, nobody care. And uh, I think we would have um, the engine, the engine, if it's not working properly, you can have the most beautiful of the body, but if the engine does not work and does not function, it malfunction, it's, uh, it's broken, the car cannot move, the church cannot move if we are people that don't care, all right? So I want to encourage you, please, let's, uh, let's together, uh, join hands together, not only caring for new people, but in order for the car to work, uh, let us put our hand together to serve God. Amen. Huh? Uh, brother, what's your name already? I forgot your name. The one in blue. You keep shaking while you know the Google very well. What's your name already? <laughs> Elena. Alexa, okay, yeah. I know it's an A anyway. <laughs> ah, Alex. You know, ah? I'll talk to you later. Ah, you're a computer man, ah? Internet fella? No, I, I work for Minister. Oh, we need an engineer in the house, amen? <laughs> ah, very good. You talk to me later, okay. See, we need people. In order for the car to work, we need people in the engine compartment to make it work, to become excited. Our people need to be excited. All right? So our worship is excited. People is excited. We are excited about God. We are excited about new people that come. We are excited about serving God. We are excited about glorifying Him. All right? Amen? That's very very important. All right. Now we want to talk about the fuel. Any car, no matter how beautiful the body, how great the engine, it will not function if there is no minya, no fuel. Right? In fact, I think fuel is very important. Even if the car is old, old car also need fuel, right now. Old engine also need fuel, right? Now, of course, if there is a beautiful car with a powerful engine with fuel, wow, why? Very important. The fuel is the anointing. Of course, God is in the whole picture, but we need His enablement. We need His unction. Most of all, we need the favor of God. And I was thinking, Lord, the favor of God upon the church. One time I was talking to a pastor whose church is growing in Singapore. I said, give me some reason why your church grow. He said, I can't give you any reason except to say that it's the favor of God. It's the favor of God. I've read some books, you know, about church growth. And, uh, and a lot of these pastors say, we don't know why we grow. We, we people can say we have done everything right, but there are many churches that do everything right also, that try to copy and try to do everything right. Then at the end of the day, it's maybe the favor of God and maybe we are ready for it. If we are not ready, we are not ready for growth. If you are not ready, you know, I can give you a big must if you are not ready to drive it will not go anywhere. So we need to be ready. We need, of course, God's anointing, God's presence. Um, in the service, I say Saturday service and Sunday service, God, come and visit us. We need your presence. We need your presence in the prayer meeting. We need your presence in the cell group. Uh, we need to experience your goodness and your greatness. We need the anointing oil of God. We need the manifest presence of God. If without God, the car will be useless. We can have a great building, a great body. We can also be a great people, but we will end up just being a clubhouse. You know, we can end up being a company or society. Without God, 
We are nothing but an empty shell. That's why we need His unction. So people who are bound need to be set free. People need to be healed. People need to see growth and changes in their life. I think everybody that walks in the church wants to grow, wants to encounter God, wants to experience God, wants to see God uh, coming in, setting them free, solving their problems, so to speak. And we become, we are the catalyst. So as an engine, it is important for us to reach out to this, some of these people. Some people come to us with a lot of trouble, with a lot of problems, and uh, maybe they are not telling us unless we gain their trust. So in that way, so with a good body and a good people, the car will be useless without the fuel. I think fuel is very important. I believe it was the discovery of oil or petrol, that people start making car work, correct or not? True or not? You make car so that the oil can work, right or not? That need oil. So, I think um, fuel is important. Uh. Of course, we will not buy an old car. We will not, not buy a car with an engine that does not work very well. But definitely, if there is no petrol in our country, every car will not work, old or new, right or not? But if there's fuel, in fact, the fuel can make us even change, change even better and be better and be better. Uh, the anointing oil can give us new idea, fresh idea and susceptible to change and growth. Let growth be a catalyst for us to change even further, to accommodate the blessings of God. Let's see if there's, I think there's one more slide. That's why we are coming together for fasting and prayer. Why? We want the anointing of God. We want His presence. Uh, frankly speaking, I'm very concerned about God's presence in our services. All right? Uh, I must say not all the time we feel God's presence, but uh, it will be great if we can have a stronger visitation of God in our services. And so, Monday, Tuesday, this whole week, we want to pray uh, for God to visit us in a greater way. So, we desire a move of God in our midst. We want God to fire us up. All right? Now, of course, it's not just this week. There's always the prayer meeting every week. There's always the services and your cell group as well. I have tell the cell leaders many, many times, the presence of God is the what that makes a difference. All right? Of course, uh, talking about the engine, I forgot this part that we're going to talk about, is the fellowship. Uh, there have been now a lot of talk about the need for a cafe after service so that people, people run away very quick. A need for a cafe. So we have been looking at a church where are we going to put the coffee machine? How many of you like a coffee machine in the church? Coffee, real coffee machine. Huh? Not Irish store, huh? but real coffee machine. Ah, okay. Ah. How, how many of you... Huh? Taufa machine. Huh? <laughs> how many of you would think a coffee machine will be good? Ah, a coffee machine. Ah, you, you, you pass by a coffee machine, you want to stay out for one, drink the coffee, right? Okay. It won't be one. I think we need two or three. Okay, we need a few coffee machine. The one automatic one. Nah, huh? You want somebody to make for you. Dai lah. Satu kali 50 cups. How? Just press button. Oh, wow. Nice brewing coffee. Wow, the aroma. The... Okay, of course, we're going to go around the world look for beans. Huh? Good beans. Huh? And uh, it will be great if you can have something like that. Have some biscuits, some cake, some muruku. Uh, some curry puff, something like that. If we can have a bit of a cafe where it will make the engine work better, warm up the engine. Hello? Say so warm up the engine. We need our engine to be warm up. And uh, really, the link, uh, I think a doubt not so much, a little bit, but young people do come to youth because of relationship. 
fellowship. I think adult also. So if we can create strong fellowship, get to know new people, even though they are not new to church, they may be already three years, but you never meet them, talk to them, find out a bit more about them. See, now I met an engineer from Finisa who tell me something can work in Google. Ah, praise the Lord. We need personalities like that. Some people to help us. All right. They say multimedia is the first thing. Anything about your church, multimedia is the first thing that introduces your church to them. As, now, we have had people walk into the church. I say, how do you find our church? They Google. All right. Of course, our you Google our church is not very attractive. La, huh? Okay, la, you know, you can find something. La. So, they'll feel. So, when they come, when they come, the body and the engine is a means of attracting people. But if they don't experience a touch of God, or a change, or the presence of God, then the church becomes just a club. I don't think we want to be just a club. Because there are spiritual elements involved. Some people are, have demonic problems. Others have emotional problems, mental problems, whatever they come. The presence of God can change that. And how do we do that? I think we need to constantly pray and ask God to visit us in a greater way. That's why this theme, the anointing, I say, Lord, we want your visitation. We want your presence so that our people can be changed. Now, I want to say this. There are people who can walk in and out of church week after week, month after month, year after year, but there are no change in their life for some reasons. For some reason. It could be uh, their, their stubbornness. It could be the presence of God. It's not there. Uh, I think that will be very tragic. I also know some people go in and out of church never got saved. And I think I cannot allow that in our church. Of course, some people will stubbornly don't want to accept Christ. Lah. But we cannot allow that that we have not challenged them. Some, I know, come in and out, uh, they never accept Christ yet. Uh, I know. I know one, uh, pay tax, pay missions, but I will accept Christ. Because such people in the, in the world, God got one in Ipoh. Wow, pay tax. Uh. Wow, give missions. Uh. He accept Christ, yeah, not yet. Uh. Wow, got people like that. Uh. God, some accept Christ, got touched by God, speaking in tongues, still never pay tight, never give mission. Oh, that one, I, I couple up pushing it. That one is a great mystery. <laughs> All right. But this mystery, I say, God, if they are stubborn, it's tough. Lah. But if there are people who walk in and out, nobody confront them or talk to them or encourage them, share Christ with them, I think it will be very tragic for us, isn't it? I think we should not allow that in our church. Amen. In conclusion, Albert Einstein, I quote this already, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Do we want a different result? Do we? I don't want to go on and on doing the same thing, right? I don't want uh, to see now let me be very careful by saying this. I don't want to see the same people again and again. Now, that doesn't mean I don't want to see you. I want to see the same people with more people, with new people, okay? Can you understand? Wow, pastor said, don't want to see the same people. Ah, okay, lah, I go somewhere else. Lah. No, that's not why I meant. What I meant is we want to see fresh, new people coming all the time and be excited about inviting somebody to church. Because when the presence of God is there, you will want to invite people. God will touch them. God will touch them. Amen? Yes? Begin with your mother, father, uncle, auntie for Kongsi celebration. Huh? Tell them again, we are celebrating Chinese New Year. Alright? Shall we all